An advertising company is trying to decide which color they should use for their company slogan. Blue, green, red, or yellow. They ask employees who have been with the company at least five years to rank their preferences. Determine the contingent winner. So when using the contingent winner method, the only thing we're going to consider is first choice votes. So the only thing we're looking at is that first row. So going through each one, we'll see which one has which first choice votes. So B has 11, G has 6, R will have 7 together, and Y has 1. So these are first choice votes. So B with 11, G with 6, R with 7, and Y with 1. So in doing the contingent winner method, you're always going to take the top two first choice getters. So we're only taking the top two. So since I have four candidates, I'm going to take half of them. So the ones with the most are B and R, so we're going to knock out G and Y. So this becomes a competition between B and R. So as I go through my list, I'm going to knock out all the G's and the Y's. So this becomes B versus R. Whoever wins will be our contingent winner. So in the first column, B is preferred more, so B gets 11. Same thing in the second column, so B gets 6 more. In the third column, R is over B, so R gets 5. In the third one, or the fourth one, R is over B, so 2 more. And the last one, 1 more. Okay, so all together, 17 to 8. So B has more votes, so B, or blue, is the contingent winner. Okay, one other thing I do want to note is that in the very first step I probably should have checked to see did blue already have the majority. Because if blue has the majority, blue is going to be the winner. So let me count up the number of votes we have total. So 11, 6, 5, 2, and 1. So there were 25 voters. 11 is not a majority. So if we had gotten 13 votes or more, we could have stopped right then and there and declared that person the winner, or that color in this case.